God, just thank you for giving us some processes for this freedom that we have to come here to get closer to you and learn our roots, all of our Jewish roots. And while you made Gentiles and other Gentiles, you still feel that grafting in with, with, with the Jewish uh, people and, and with Jesus being a Jew and uh, all the learning that we're going to have to uh, Jeffrey and insight that we gained. Just ask you to bless everyone here in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Looks like we're the chosen few this morning. Not the chosen folks. Not the chosen folks. Oh, no. 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 When I used to go to Assembly of God Church, we would say, that's the Baptist. The Baptist for the frozen chosen. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I hope everybody knows what day this is. Last week, they should know. It's more than a Monday. Day of atonement. Huh? That's right. It's the most holy day of the entire year. In the Jewish calendar, in the word of God, and it should be in our hearts too. <laughs> um, we did a little bit this morning on devotion. I forgot about it uh, to teach it last, last week, but uh, in the book of Leviticus, uh, I'm going to read this a little bit to you. Uh, Leviticus uh, 16, start at verse 29. It says, this shall be a statue forever for you in the seventh month on the 10th day of the month. You shall afflict your souls and do no work at all. So in other words, it's a Sabbath. Today is the Sabbath. They use it, it, it follows the same rules and regulations as the one on Saturday, but it's, it's this is also a Sabbath. It's called a high Sabbath. Um, whether a native uh, of your own country or a stranger who sojourns among you. For on that day, the priest shall make atonement for you to cleanse you that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It is a Sabbath of solemn rest for you. And you shall afflict your souls as a statue forever. Now, when it says afflict your souls, you know, this means, you know, um, you're the fast on this day. Uh, generally, when you're younger and can do it, you do water and food for the entire, they go 26 hours, make sure, you know, just to make sure that they're correct on both ends, you know. So, um, if they do that, and then they have a short, in the Orthodox, they have a short, on the uh, Messianic congregations too, they have a short service uh, at the end of today, and it's called a break fast. And then it's the shortest uh, service that they do have every year. And then as soon as it's done, then everybody goes eat, you know. So, anyway. Uh, uh, it's Golden Corral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I've seen a Golden Corral. When I was that church. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, I didn't read. I didn't read correctly here. Uh, the, the offer up. Uh, they bring two goats, and the two goats. Uh, one of them is going to be sacrificed, and the other one's going to be what they call the scapegoat. And you probably heard that expression, the scapegoat. You know, he's the one that. Uh, takes the takes the punishment uh, for what's for other people what they've done. Well, this this is where it came from, that terminology. But the high priest then lays his hands on the scapegoat, and the other one's going to, like I said, the other one's going to be sacrificed. Then the scapegoat is taken out and led out the wilderness and supposedly let go. But most of the time, if there's a if there's a clip around or something like that, they'll bring it to that and then push it over to make sure it dies, you know, because they certainly don't want that to come back because all the sins of the people have been placed upon it. Well, uh, during Passover, the high priest laid his hands on Jesus, and then they had two goats. Jesus is one of them, and uh, Barabbas was the other, 
people try which one they want. So the same thing applied. Barabbas, they let go, but, and then Jesus, they sacrificed. So there's a similar terminology there, a similar thing um, in that, uh, in what they're doing today. Uh, so Jesus is our scapegoat? Certainly. He bore our sins. I mean, I just never thought of it. You never thought of it that way, but never yes, thought of it that way. But that, the scapegoat takes it. takes the punishment. He wasn't. He wasn't. Uh, I mean, he was a sinless person. Yeah, I know, and I know he took the sins. Yeah, well, it's a sacrificial lamb, which is a scapegoat. It's it's it. You know, it's 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 all very similar terminology. Yeah, he Barabbas was a, a scapegoat. Okay, so that's what I thought. So Barabbas yeah. was actually the scapegoat. Yeah, Barabbas was actually the scapegoat, and Jesus took the punishment, the sacrifice. Yeah, mm -hmm. good, but good for us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I just never heard the analogy of scapegoat. I mean, I know he took her sins and he died oh, for us all. Yeah, well, I've heard the terminology a lot of times, you know. Of, well, of I've heard scapegoat, but I just never associated it with the Bible and Jesus and all yeah. that, you know. Yeah, well, that's where some of this stuff comes from, you know, from the Bible. Yeah. Uh, then we got into um, then the next few steps to that, because we went over uh, uh, Yom Kippur pretty well last time. Any other questions about Yom Kippur today? Okay. Then the next one we went over was uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, and we went pretty much over that. Um, I'm going to pass around a picture. It's because uh, we talked about the lulav and the esrod. The lulav is the uh, with all the um, different branches of, of, of things, and and then the esrod is like I said, like a like a lemon, but it's a much bigger one. And this kind of shows you what the lulav and the esrod look like. So just pass it, take it, and look at the pass it around. So that'll give you the idea of that. Um, yeah, the, the estrogen is the ancient fruit. That's the citrus fruit. Uh, like I said, it tastes similar to a lemon, but it's it's nobody eats it. Nobody not anymore. Um, Then after the um, Feast of Tabernacles, like I said, I think we went over that pretty much each last time. Uh, at the end of the day, I have a water pouring ceremony, but, and they get water from the pools of Pool of Shalom and take it to the temple, but um, that hasn't been done for. They still, the Orthodox still do a certain amount of uh, water pouring ceremony, but um, it's not, it's not meant, it's not used too much. Um, and we talked about the menorahs, the menorah. I like what it says here on page 57 scapegoat and the uh, sacrificial goat. So Jesus, it says Jesus was would be symbolic of both. Yeah, mm -hmm. so he's outside the tent, but he's also sacrificed. So he's going to use the double Yeah, he he did both. He did both. He took both of them, and then to a certain extent, but um, but because he was sacrificed, you know. The other thing that's really important here is the special curtain we talked about. And yeah, when. So that was, that, those curtains weren't sheer fabric. Oh, no, they were like they were this thick. This thick, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's not like a little curtain. I mean, it's not like, you know, even all of us could no, pair it no, together. You know, it's it's massive. massive. So permanently opening up the temple to all having access to the Father. Mm -hmm. Having access, right. well, that curtain was between the holy, right. the holy of holies, you know. So now we do have access through Yeshua or, to the holy of holies. So different in, in the uh, temple, 
synagogues, mm -hmm. do they ever make reference to the fact that in history that that actually happened? That the that the, the day when the when the curtain was torn. Oh no, they, they don't mention anything. No, they don't mention anything about that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Huh? I wouldn't think so. But no, you're right. That history, I mean, they they're, they're being selective. Yeah. They're being very selective. You know, they count Jesus as a as a prophet, mm -hmm. a good person, mm -hmm. you know. But that's as far as they go. But anything else above and beyond uh, that, no, they don't um, like the, the temple curtain being, you know, or or anything, or like I say, Isaiah 51. Um, I mean, uh, Isaiah 53 and... Uh, uh, Psalm 22 and a lot of other places that talk about who Jesus is and what he's done and what he's fulfilled. No, they don't talk about it at all. And when they do even come across some of those some of those things, they say it's for it's for Israel as a whole, you know. It's not uh, it's not a person, you know. It's, but they they avoid it as much as possible. <laughs> so I guess they avoid the, the scripture that well they don't look at the New Testament at all. Oh no no no. Avoid mm -hmm. the scripture of saying he was, he was born in Bethlehem and when he died people came out of their graves they just ignore. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. They just skip the Old Testament people I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well of course that's the Old Testament was all they had at the mm -hmm. time of Jesus mm -hmm. when Jesus walked these. I mean most Christians don't realize that that all that they had was the Old Testament. The New Testament didn't come about till uh, start to come about until 25 at the Council of Nicaea. That's when it started to come about. Yeah. So you're talking about the Old Testament. You mean the first five books? No, that's the Tanakh. Uh, you know, the Tanakh, it, uh, that's Torah, which we're talking about the first five books. The Tanakh is what we call the Old Testament. It's, it's called the Tanakh. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it, word for word is probably is pretty close to exactly the same. They are the difference in the in the books. I mean, how they're arranged, but other than that, they're they're pretty close right on to what we have. But they have a different interpretation. Oh yeah. That's that talks about the Messiah, right? Isaiah 53, yeah. They avoid it. They don't even put it in before. It jumps from 52 to 54. Yes. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah. Some of their, I mean, a lot of, some of theirs have it in, but some of them don't. I mean, some of them they've taken it right out because they avoid it. They don't want, they don't want to discuss it. They don't want to talk about it. From that jail form, four, right? So mm -hmm. how do they explain what happened, what caused that? They don't even they mention the it. They, don't, they, don't. they just ignore it's like they, know, they ignore it. Remember they put the book back to 30 years ago, hunting down, killing Christians, trying to eradicate them. They even got the Romans to start killing them. Mm -hmm. The Romans became the scapegoat for all the problems that Roman had in the middle of the death. Then the temple was destroyed. Yeah, in 70 AD, the temple was destroyed. It was around, around 32, 33 AD is when Jesus was crucified. So rapidly, within a couple of decades, everything was torn up and torn down. You have nothing to destroy. I just wonder what, what they thought about who they were going to attack it. You know, and they didn't, they they didn't write celebrate. about it. Yeah. They didn't tell everybody about it. It was just like they tried to quickly sweep it out of the rug. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like they tried to. The curtain that fell. Yeah, it's like they tried to sweep it under the rug about Jesus' death. I mean, you know, they they claim that his body got stolen and this type of thing, and then he really didn't die, and you know, they're doing all that stuff at that time, and it still goes on today to a certain, yeah. you know. Yeah. Sure it does. Sure does. Yeah. yeah, but that's all. You know, the whole thing is, you know, it's Satan and God. Yeah. Right. You know, that's that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's Satan and God. God reveals the truth and try Satan tries to yeah. turn it and steal it and twist it and to his advantage. Somebody once told me that it, it made sense when I was young, they said that Satan will take a grain of truth 
and hide a mountain that lies behind you. Well, how do you do that? You just put your thumb up to your eye and look at a mountain. You can't see it. Mm -hmm. so that's how we get, we throw that food by the city and feed it. That we have to see. Politics or whatever you want to call it, you know, the people that are running the world, the 13 families, they take a little piece of truth and then they, they, they push that in front of your eyes so close, make a big deal about that. That's all you're focused on. And they're doing all this other stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, even when, you know, it's when, uh, after, after Jesus, um, was, was, um, He came out of the water and he went into the into the wilderness. You know, Satan spoke words. You know, from the so-called the Bible to him to Jesus, but he still twisted them a little bit. You know, and just just to make them work for him. You know, he twisted things. Human weaknesses. Yeah. Would, would make them stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was really hungry as a human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get pretty hungry when you're going 40 days. Yeah. Uh, I did a 21 day once, and cool. with, with both, uh, I, I fasted all food, and uh, the only thing I drank was black coffee, uh, cool. you know, or water. I mean, you know. <laughs> That's food. That's a good way to eat up your stomach. No, no, I only did that once. And that's been many, 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 many years ago. <laughs> hey, I had water, you know. Three days without water and death. Oh, yeah. No, I had water. But uh, after three days, you really stop getting hungry. Yeah, you do. You know, it's, it's surprising. Yeah. Your stomach. That's down. It yeah. That never goes away. No. And that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you're supposed to take one of the ones that they use it. Half a rock in your head. Or make it. Yeah. Yeah. I buried the water in the rock in the Death Valley ahead of time when I went to cross it. I thought May would be cold. It's not cold. <laughs> and I couldn't find the rocks because they were all the same. <laughs> Prince came and rescued me. But I, I hated water up until then. Mm -hmm. Now you love it. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 not surprising how uh, Satan twists things and everything else. Um, let's go back to the other book where we were actually where we were before, and then we'll come back later on to the spring feasts and festivals and some of the additional feasts that are that uh, the Jews uh, go by. So we're going to go back to page five. Oh. Yep, way back in the way back to the left. This is where some of that talking about um, the persecution of of uh, Christians and Jews, and how some of the division came up. Uh, we did cover some of it, but. Um, it's been quite, it's been quite a while since we've been into it. Uh, the beginning of persecution and discrimination actually came about all right from the pretty much from the beginning. As soon as the, the uh, uh, Gentiles started to come in to the uh, to the way that was the that was the congregation that they that was going on that uh, said that Jesus was the Messiah. They were originally all Jews, but then or some some righteous Gentiles at that time. But as as it progressed, uh, more and more Gentiles came into the movement, and um, then some of the the, the, uh, the Jewish people they they left it. But this is where Paul was having some of his problems with some of the people. You know, do they keep all the laws or don't they keep the laws and uh, I mentioned last time that we were talking about it, um, about the no hide laws, where the Gentiles don't have to keep all the, you know, the Ten Commandments, uh, the commandments of God, but they do have to keep some. And that's where we talked about uh, 
Uh, let's see. We'll get there. Five. Five. Oh, two pages of five. What? Wait, no, there shouldn't be. No, there's four and five. It's not. Oh, yeah, yeah, and there's that. Second book, you're going to tell. Oh, I see. Okay, now I know what I am. I'm sorry, I didn't make myself plain clear enough. No, that's okay. But, um, yeah, the no hide laws were the seven light. We, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, they prohibit um, blaspheming, idolatry, adultery. Uh, murder, robbing, and the eating of flesh cut from a living animal. Remember, we talked about that. Yeah. Um, they did have to abstain also from food polluted by idols and sexual immorality. Um, Meat, uh, meat from strangled animals and from blood. These were ritual in, uh, moral impurities uh, in the, for the law of Moses. Uh, they didn't have to um, honor the Sabbath. And they don't list in here as far as one of the things, I mean, some of the things like, you know, honor your father and mother and things like that. But if you're a Christian, you still should. <laughs> and honor your father or mother is, is the only, only uh, commandment uh, with a positive uh, outlook on it. <laughs> you know, because you'll have long life if you do. So, but uh, this is where some of this, division started to grow. I mean, the more and more Christians, more and more Gentiles that came into this, this movement, uh, they didn't want to keep all the commandments of the of the laws of, uh, of the Jews. They were also meeting at that time, still in, at the very beginning, they were still meeting in the uh, uh, synagogues. They didn't have separate places. So they were meeting in the synagogues and and that's where you were having the, the friction between uh, between the, the Jews and the movement of, of the way, called the movement called the way. Um, and like that, that's mentioned uh, about four or five times in the book of Acts, the way. Um, Why don't people uh, get known for the same thing? No, no, I don't know. Because I, years and years when I was a kid, I always went by the tenth man that was a part of my life, you know. Because I always thought God gave us some ten commandments. And, you know, yeah. it's easier to for me to distinguish that. Yeah, well, it is. I mean, just doing the ten commandments. That's, sh I mean, if you look at these, what they are, I mean, if you have a respect for human life and a respect for your brother and, you know, you should automatically keep them. <laughs> Careful who you're pointing to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what she was saying, though, what impresses me is Jesus said he came to fulfill the law. And that includes, I think, the Ten Commandments and all the law. Well, I, you know, I, I think that this is part of a misinterpretation of what Jesus really did. He, first of all, came and fulfilled all the law about who the Messiah was. That they didn't they didn't recognize. That was that's the heart of why Jesus said, I came to fulfill all the laws. 
he also came and what he did away with was the curse of the law. He didn't do away with the law, but he came away with the curses of the law. If you if you don't if you don't like him, you're going to hell. Um, with a lot of curses, I think. Oh yeah, but I that, mean that goes on today. I I, mm. I like see this, uh, you know. I like I always said that after my husband passed, like I felt like I was sheltered, and now I open my eyes up to these people, and some of them are like, <laughs> that ain't this ain't right. I mean, I won't say anything directly to them, but mm -hmm. I go home and pray for them because. Yeah. I don't think this is right. You know, that's just, a, you know what I mean? The way they treat other people or the way they act. And mm -hmm. I'm like, come on, this people are, I don't well, know where, I, where I came from, but. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll grant you. I mean, there's some people that, you know, you, you, you just don't, but. Well, I, I don't know. I've always liked everybody and I always looked at yeah. the good in people. Yeah. Well, when I said, you know, if you don't like him, I'm going to the extreme. I know, I you know. understand that. Yeah, it's the same way, you know, if you steal a little bit, you know, steal a little bit of candy, you know, you're going to hell. Right. You right. know, it, it, but he did over, with, that's, the, that's the curse of the law that he did away with. Because people will come right out and say, oh, well, I don't like her. Or she, I'm like, I'm like, what? You don't even know this lady. She don't like her looks or the way she wears her hair or what 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 is what is this all about you know yeah that's, that's my way of thinking and even though there are people who don't have the same chemistry or same but, spirit it's yeah. a spirit it's a spirit i mean i come across some, some people just see the person so i don't like her but you don't say that no oh, well i because i don't you i don't want to hurt anybody's feelings Mother, my mother always said, "Do unto others as you want them to do to you." And certain things that my mother had brought us up with stuck with me, mm -hmm. and that's the way I live my life. Oh, well, that's a good way. Yeah. <laughs> could Could you say the curse of the law is sin and death? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you sin, you have to die. Yeah. And Jesus, Jesus died for us. He took the curse upon him. That's why. That's what happened when he died. Okay. He took that curse upon him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had that, a lot of times when I was young. <laughs> yeah, but I'm alive now. So. <laughs> but you know, so this is where the disposition of grace came in. Uh, that's where the disposition. <laughs> well, you know, we're under the the original two thousand years. We were under the uh, the noetic. Noah error from Noah to Jesus, we were under the law error, error, and from Jesus to us right now, we under the under grace mm -hmm. right now. And the next one hundred years will be the will be the millennium. Mm -hmm. It'll be the Sabbath. Satan will be bound, and. Of course, uh, we are, ourselves will be with Jesus. Unless Jesus comes right away and some of us aren't saved, but you know, but uh, oh, we'll be with Jesus with new bodies and everything else. And we're supposed to be kings and priests. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly what will be king, kings and priests over? I'm not sure. If the scripture doesn't say it. I'm sure that some of the pastors could probably. <laughs> read into something into that but there will be people on the earth and they will they will multiply they will live a long life and um you know i think scripture says that in, in uh, revelation it talks about if someone dies at you know 300 years old they died early you know <laughs> so or something to that extent it did it said but um uh, and then at the end of the thousand years, then um, Satan is released for three months, and he gathers the army and comes. And that's when the final, the final war, and uh, at that, that point, Satan is put into the lake of fire, and there will be nothing else. And that's when New Jerusalem comes down, and uh, we have our home there. 
So yeah. I heard somebody say, you know, why is why is why is always Jesus the only way? You know, mm -hmm. people think that's narrow. It is narrow. Mm -hmm. And it is, and, and but somebody yeah, explained, it's narrow. And somebody it's explained it as you know, there's only one way to be born. Mm -hmm. So why is it so narrow if there's if somebody says the it's, it's all, you know Jesus is the only way mm -hmm. to heaven? Mm -hmm. That's a good explanation of it. It's a good it's a good analogy of it because you're definitely there's only one way. I mean, even in this woke uh, community where man can give a birth. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. everybody, can, you know. When you, Think you're a man or a woman, it's going to be born at some point. So, babies and stuff, and oh, yeah, you know, and just crazy. They still have to put them in either surrogate a female, that's true. In yeah. order for that, and then, then still the birth then still comes out the one way. Well, you can kind of come out because still in the well, yeah, they're they're doing stuff even beyond that stuff. So I mean, and whether or not it is even a human at that point, uh, you know, only God knows, and we don't want to get into that. There's a lot of humans in this world. I think yeah. sooner or later, you come to a point when you try to explain that you kind of don't any further. You say it's just the way it is. Sorry, I didn't make it, but mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. the way yeah. it is. Period. Yeah. 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 That's the rest. The law has got to go down, and you know, if if you don't like the law, you know, don't argue with me. You know, argue with him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why God works in mysterious ways. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Christians they don't obey the law to be saved, but they obey the law because they are Christians, because they want to please God. You know, that's the bottom line of everything. Is we want to please God, do what God wants us to do. And we want to have peace. Yeah. Because if we follow God, way we have the peace. That's right. God doesn't want us to be sacrificial. He wants us to be obedient. Mm -hmm. But we have to get our ourself out of it. You know, and it's a problem. It's, it's a problem with all of us every day. I mean, I know for me it is. I just have to remind myself, I'm not it's not about me. Yeah, you know, and I have to remind myself all the time, yeah. especially when my family reminds me. Or I have to. <laughs> oh yeah, about me. Yeah, no, it's you know, I, I, the problems come upon me. I say, okay, God, this is your problem, not mine. You know, because I'm a child of God. You know, so I just well, yeah, wouldn't you agree though that a lot of times when we try to talk to people who just and I was one of them, so I, I kind of get it. Mm -hmm. But someone tries to talk to you about the Lord or whatever, and and, and uh, Jesus is the only way that all these other religions and philosophies, you know, they're all a deception. And yeah. I'm thinking, well, who are you to tell me that? You know, how do you know? Mm -hmm. Then they go to the scripture. Well, I don't recognize the scripture as relevant to, or, uh, or, you know, I don't, I forget how I used to put that, but it wasn't relevant to me or uh, at credibility, I think is what I said. And I really feel the only way that I came around because I had such an attitude, it was the Holy Spirit. That's right. Mm -hmm. really and if the Holy Spirit is not touching it for it doesn't matter what you say. I don't care how logical you are. You know, you could you could take Plato, who who basically proved the God by deductive logic. Well, if you're a philosopher, you say, well, I might consider it. Well, might isn't going to cut it. You either take it or you don't, right? But if the Holy Spirit's the one that really guides you that yeah. way, and then you can look back and say, wow, I went for the Holy Spirit. I'd still be thinking the same way I did when I was 20. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but Holy Spirit. That's, 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 that's a very good point. That, that a lot of Christians and people know that we, we make the same mistake and think that we have to convert that person. We yeah. have to get them to understand. If I can only make them understand, I'm going to try to tell them. Yeah, yeah that's the wrong true. thing. Yeah, you, know, you can give them, you tell them, the truth, tell them about Jesus, and the seeds planted. Yeah. You can also you have to demonstrate it in your walk. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. So With it, love. It, it, yes. Yeah. And so that's the hard part is that we have to get our ego out. It's mm -hmm. not us. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah. So the Holy Spirit. Well, but yeah. I, I had that happen to me once with a young man that 15 years later he came back. He didn't, he was in a Wana club. I just didn't like God be able to run a Wana club and he just spoke through me as messages in his council. That just one thing, maybe back to the back, always 
spinning around, messed around, never paid attention. The leaders that worked with him said, you just, you can't control it. And um, so I, I it just went back there. And three months later, his parents moved. 15 years later, he came back to me and told me something. He was, he got into a life of, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll. He was a, a fat bodyguard for some band, rock band at some place out of Southern California. And he laid his uh, Harley down on the freeway um, and woke up a couple of days later and it's from a coma and full body tag. Mm. Every bone was broken. Oh. Every bone was taken out, fracture, at least one, and uh, including multiple skull fractures, and uh, which probably relieved the pressure. But um, anyway, he just he woke he woke up, and he, when he woke up, the, oh, the first thing that came to his brain was so the verse that I was repeating several times in the council message. Wow. I don't even remember what it was. A lot of times it was just something I'd get up and just God would say, pick this, use this. And um, and, and so that's all I did. It's like five minutes, maybe 10. And he says that that kept going in his head. And he just started, started crying. The only thing he could do. <laughs> and uh, he just gave his life to God. And, yeah. and uh, he's now, he came to me and told me he's a youth minister. Wow. So, yeah. Um, but it wasn't me. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no. I, you know, and he knew that it wasn't me. He just was grateful that I was obedient to God mm -hmm. and shared and demonstrated. Mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit did everything else. Oh yeah, the Holy Spirit. The seed was planted. I did, that was to me. It was like uh, just that, and I realized that uh, all we have to do is be obedient. We don't have to know all the people that no. change or when they change. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was fun. Are you or something? Yeah. <laughs> like <somebody. laughs> anyway, yeah, so that is yeah, it's, it's a that's what we have to remind ourselves of. Yeah. We think we fail with our children or we plant seeds. Mm -hmm. that's, the thing that's, that's, that's all God told us to do is plant seeds. You know, we don't, he says, you know, some seeds are fall on good ground. Some on rocks and yeah. and everything we else. We don't know. It's not up to us. Right. So and like he said, the one the one that he said, the one that he remember, it was the, the commandment that we get back to here. It's yeah. the two that Jesus said and the challenge there. Mm -hmm. Love God. Yeah. And love and your fellow. Love right? As you love yourself. Not not the way the new ages change it to no. as you should love yourself. He actually said as you love yourself. So, yeah. But you got to love yourself too, but you know, know pretty much, and you love yourself in Christ, yeah, in God, the true love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But most, most, just about everybody loves themselves, even the ones that wanted to kill themselves. Because if they really hated themselves, they would just say, "Fine, I deserve this all this misery. Why die?" Yeah. But they feel they don't deserve that because they love themselves. So um, they're just that. It, it, Christ said, "God said, as you love yourself, you know the heart." Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and yeah. those two can encompass all the hundreds that you can come up with, all the delineations. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. Well, bottom line is the fact that you know, if, if God opens, if you God opens any kind of door to speak to somebody, regardless, you speak it to them. But the minute they shut themselves down, you might as well shut, you know, shut off, you know, because uh, all the scripture says, do not, you know. Pearls before swine, you know, don't catch your pearls before swine. And the word of God is a pearl to us. I mean, it's it's a valuable pearl. So, you know, but if there's an open door, I mean, I when I stand in line at Walmart, I mean, I try to, you know, get a conversation going, be a person ahead of me or behind me. And, you know, and of course, I always, you know, get in Jesus, you know, <laughs> you know, where do you stand or with end times or whatever, you know. And then we just see, I just see how the conversation is going. And if I can keep talking, I will. But who knows where these, these, these seeds that you do sow will come back many years later on a person. You know, I don't know who put say, seeds on me, but 40 years, the lower 40 years ago, I mean, I got saved over television. 
you know, Robert Schuller's hour of power. <laughs> and he was not known as, you know, as an evangelist uh, type of thing, you know. But somebody had so said something to me and all of a sudden it clicked. It clicked. The Holy Spirit wanted me. Okay, that's enough. You know, your 40 years in the wilderness is enough, you know, so. <laughs> I always believe that. You have to, you have to love yourself in order to love somebody else. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, like I said, we're talking about the beginning of uh, discrimination and persecution. Like I said, it, it it started right from the beginning um, after Jesus died, um, but it just kept getting worse and worse. And then at the, in uh, three twenty five at the Council of Nicaea, that's when uh, Constantine made Christianity. Uh, an official religion. He himself uh, became a Christian uh, shortly before his death. Um, but a lot of these things came about at, at that Council of Nicaea. And that's where they added all the, a lot of the feast and festivals that would be convenient with the uh, Christians, with the pagans and with all the other religions. Uh, like Easter um, and also Christmas. That's where they became a lot of those uh, at that time. And because they wanted to get away from the Jewishness. Um, it's too bad they wanted to get away. But the, that stuff that's been going on and on. Um, Anti-Semitism has been growing. It has never really left uh, in 324 or 340, Rome placed heavy taxation on Jews. Um, in 305, uh, Christians in Spain split from marrying or even sharing meals with Jews. In year 553, uh, Jews could not read Hebrew books anymore in the synagogues. Either Mishnah or any other rabbinical, everything like that was banned. In 612, Spain uh, issued uh, all debts to Jews were void, for Jews were to be allowed to retain ownership of their land, but they had to convert to, to Christianity. Um, and there's a bunch of other ones, and just, you know. The one biggest one that we remember is uh, the Holocaust, um, where Hitler, you know, wanted to, you know, wanted to eliminate all the Jews, because Hitler and and, and Satan, uh, they they think right. They think even right now that if they could ever eliminate all the Jews, then the word of God would be uh, a void, and then he what? could would be void, would be done away with. The word of God would be done away with if he could ever eliminate all the Jews. Yeah, well, Christians are grafted in now, so you're a Jew too. Oh, okay. You know, but uh, of course he was talking about the natural Jews. Right. But, uh, mm -hmm. At the Council of Nicaea, did they... Did they put the blame on the Jews for crucifying Jesus? That's what it sounds like right here. Hey, they probably did. Um, which page are you on? Five. Five. Uh, five. 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 Okay. Right down here somewhere. Mm -hmm. it says the Jews who had soiled their hands with the most fearful crimes and whose minds were blinded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I assume that crime is crucifying Jesus. Yeah. I mean, even today, I mean, a lot of there's a lot of churches. I mean, you know, they blame the Jews to for, for crucifying Jesus. You know, they don't read the scriptures. That's exactly right. They're not looking at history. They're not looking at the scripture. No, it was already prophesied about yeah. what was going to happen. Yeah, uh, the Jews didn't. I mean, first of all, in the Bible, when it talks about the Jews and and, and that. Uh, it's actually a mistranslation. It's supposed to be Judeans. Because it doesn't even make sense when Jesus comes into the town, 
all the Jews are, yay, you know, and they're, they're doing things and the thing. And then he doesn't really do anything for three days. And all of a sudden, the king against him. Well, it's not the same group of people. It's the Judean thing again. But even, you know, the Judeans, they didn't, um, you know, they say crucify and crucify and crucify. But the Romans are the ones that laid the stripes on them below under the nails. The Romans are the ones that, you know, that did all the damage on Jesus. So, I mean, it's everybody. All the, you know, all people have done it. We've done it too, to Christ, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if Jesus were, you know, to really come out and start walking amongst the earth, yeah, two thirds of people would, would, would chastise him, would, you know, go against him. Try to kill him, try to do whatever they could, you know? Of course, that's what they see in us, and that's why they're trying to kill us. That's why anti-Semitism is growing beliefs and bounds. And me having a Jewish name, I mean, I have seen it already in my life, and I know it's getting worse. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. But nobody talks about that. But the have, journalists yeah. don't like to know. Right. But yeah. I watch it very careful. Yeah. 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 You have that, and then the anarchists will start taking, start trying to come back in. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's very true. It's, you know, and then they get put that swastika on the. You know, and the build of the Jewish graves and everything, and you know, they're, they're, <clears throat> the, the uh, Europeans know because the, you know the anarchists always say your the, the argument is that, is that they come back if you close the argument and you're not. It that seems to play with that mm -hmm. by in some politics sure. okay. and also in Canada they, yeah. they declared that they just said that the whole trucking movement were 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 Nazis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did that in Europe and say Nazi in Europe is, a, is a, like an N word. You know? mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what actually got people in Europe to push back against the, the, the anarchists. But the Muslims, mm -hmm. it's a different story. But, uh, yeah, I had to negotiate a lot. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it was very interesting to me. Yes, they're taking advantage. This is all in the prophets. Oh, yeah. You know, they throw off in the Old Testament, not even the New Testament prophets. Yeah. Hey, you see all this discrimination and everything against the Jews, but you don't see anything against Muslims. No. Not a thing. Yeah. You know, and it's, and it's okay for the Muslim countries, you know, to, uh, the abortion's not allowed in most of the Muslim countries. There's no uprising over that. No, or the gays. It's, yeah. It's like when you push off a building. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they won't, they won't tolerate it. People talk about how wonderful they are. Like the Palestinians, mm -hmm. which is just a Roman trick, a Roman Jews at the time, we renamed Israel Palestine, which was after the Philistines. Mm -hmm. Just as a focus. Yeah. Satan is always like the things down to a very black and white. It's not always gray like philosophy. Mm -hmm. right? so just... Well, it just goes to that old uh, adage that says if you don't learn from history, you're bound to repeat it. Yeah. Well, people were repeating it six months ago. <laughs> That was almost like yes. in the 1940s. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was, I, I, I was about to say, do you want me to put a sticker on? But I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. 
But it's true. And when I mentioned that, it's, oh, how can you compare it? I said, well, I can't compare it. I, I, feel, I got the feeling how the things are going to be cut. Well, now they already have you. But oh, if you're, if you're, this if you're, is why Daniel and, and John in Revelation were sick when they saw what was going to happen in the future. Yeah. That's why they were sick. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The, the thing is that I always thought it was something. We couldn't get up for four, three or four that days. It was happening because of, we, we turned over the keys after uh, with Satan of the earth and so mm -hmm. the corruption that she. Turned out they, they, they saw the future. Yes. These diseases, man, mm -hmm. the changing of the weather, the, the all the shifting of the land, the earthquakes, man. It's people say, well, I think God doing this. No, man, God, man is doing this now. I can't, I can't tell you what I know, but they, I know. they have the, the machinery that can mm -hmm. actually do Change targeted. It. That's why when the pastor said that it was a was a targeted energy. At, uh, uh, like in it, Hawaii, it, there. It's not oh, the that our receiver. Yeah. It's oh, the light yeah. Strikes oh. That. Mm -hmm. So. In a Maui, that's something that, yes, that's that, yeah. and also it happened in Northern California. Um, yeah, fire. Yeah. 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 And it, it, it was the fires in Canada. They mm -hmm. were sprayed them with desiccant so that it would dry out the forest because the forest won't burn just constantly if they're too, been too, it's too wet. Yeah. But that's the only way they had to pre treat it. So it's man. Well, yeah. so this is that. This is that's why there's a great sadness. In fact, there's so many humans that have sold their souls to the devil mm -hmm. and, and giving him, and he's just using them. Yeah. They think they're gaining power yeah. and strength. And, yeah. You know, like Trudeau, you, know, and, you know, but it's just what's that again? They're useful idiots. Yeah. They, they, they are, but they think that they're, yeah, they, they have all this power. Mm -hmm. It'll be gone. But mm -hmm. so we don't need despair because we are. Yeah. Adopted into the family of God. Mm -hmm. so. and actually, I think the more we see what's written in the Bible and more feel it, and spirit, yeah. so, yeah, there are words the Bible. Mm -hmm. right. so there are people who do just the opposite, and then mm -hmm. can't you see that? And they, they, they just want to. They're, 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 they're blinded. They're also blinded. blinded. Did you say that people <laughs> with hundred pound hailstones coming down on them, and they're still in a curse of God, God. Yeah. Could, not, could not turn to him. Well, the Pharisees, the Pharisees talking to Jesus directly, seeing the Son of God right there. Yeah. And what do they do? Mm -hmm. They turn to get him too. Yeah. I mean, because what was, more can you ask? You know why? Standing right there. You know why they turned away? Against he did Well, he didn't follow the law. No. They, yeah, they made up all that stuff. Because because he did follow the law. The reason why they turned against him because he was taking authority away from yeah. people were going and they were giving money yeah. to the movement to the after crucifixion yeah. and yeah. taking money away from them. They wanted the money, the power, the authority, the gold. And yeah. so it's, it's the same thing. It just keeps running through. It's the same thing in yeah. churches and synagogues and everything today. Yeah. You know, if the pastor, rabbi, or whatever. You know, it's a business with them, most of them. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. 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 But we're all, we all have a weakness in place. Satan is looking for that weakness. And if it's, you know, people, oh, Satan can't, he's not omnipresent. Yes, but he has his minions too. Yeah. But you also have what's inside of you. I, I, I have, my wife and I have guests for money, but we really don't like that guest. Um, we spend a lot of time for self. Well, for not, but all everything we have, and uh, but I was offered a job by the Chinese because I have I was uh, above top secret level in the government and and uh, know things and, and uh, so and if they were offering me three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year salary, and that was whether I was you know just just to help, and I well, it was not even a question. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, no. But it's just, but I'm saying though that we are all given that we all have this temptation. It's just some people they don't have the Holy Spirit in them to give them the strength to resist. Well, the inside, or yeah, well, just even the inside, mm -hmm. the inside, yeah, the inside of realizing what their actions, what that means, all of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why, that's also why I, I adopted, my wife and I adopted a young couple that are refugees from Alberta, Canada, and five little kids. And um, the, during the two-year lockdown, you know, you, we think we have it too tough here. They were coming up to their little farming community, tapping on their window, not as police, or maybe not police, tapping on their bedroom window, the backside of their house, to see if they were coming at midnight, two in the morning, anything. Because they had their cell phones there, a lot of people were leaving their cell phones that they were talking to people in their, their, in their house and they would go out. And then you had the mayor of the town standing up the main street looking at who was going into whose house and reporting it. So he got, he got special uh, credits. This is the future of America. But yeah. anyway, and then they have three children they adopted, um, and um, they, are, uh, they all have health problems. Uh, and you have two of them all that have been to their um, but and they, they are also they're following they're like kind of messianic Jews, but they're not they're Christians that are following the way of the Jewish, you know, including the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. um, that is, but, um, but anyway, they wanted to inoculate their children, and they already have health issues, and they said no, they want to they were going to come and take their children. So he was secretly converting a bus. Um, into a motorhome, had to ship it across the border because they couldn't even drive them across at that time. And they had to take a private plane over here and they got to the airport, the little tiny airport, and the border was over there. And the one is the last little girl they adopted, and she's a little bit of um, blonde, blue eyed, but she's, so they weren't going to adopt her at the agency. They, they went in and said, You got to take it, you got to take it, you got to I, I we can't. We're gonna leave. We don't have enough time for the adoption process. We get the papers. And so you got she's indigenous, 50% indigenous. Oh. What does that mean? What is this? What does that mean? So if you're indigenous in native um, native Canadian, in, Indian. If you're Indian, oh. yeah. So she's would oh. if, if she's blue eyed, blonde hair, but 50% indigenous, automatic you're gonna be taken away and put into the slave trade. Oh wow! Yeah. Yes, and you'll probably either you'll get pregnant before you're 12, or die, or you know whatever they want to do. And uh, so they they say they take it. And so they took her, and they came across the women. They get to the border patrol, and he says, "You don't have papers for her." And this is you last. Mm -hmm. And he says, "Okay." Then so Ken says, "The father," and Ken and Bree. So Ken says. Then you take her. We'll go. The rest of us will go. And, and breathe. He's like, oh. <laughs> you know, she's all the part. And then he goes, are you serious? No, no. You have to go back. No, you take her. All our other papers are good. Good. We'll go. And Bree's still screaming and howling. I mean, she's going to lose the baby. And uh, so uh, go to, I, let me go talk to my superior. I can't make the decision. So he walked into the little building. And uh, so he turned her down and said, I'm bluffing. You should have told me. You should have told me. He said, no, you wouldn't have reacted like this. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, so, he, uh, so he sees the, the, the guard in there talking to the supervisor. All of his arms going everywhere and pointing. And, pointing this way. and then finally he comes out about 20 minutes later. Um, and he, he says, he says, here, go. And he goes, well, what about her? You got to take her. Because we got to, you know, and just, no, take her, go. <laughs> so they're in the United States. And they bought two acres. About 40 minutes uh, here, up to the west of Gaines, or Gainesville, um, in the woods. They prayed about it and prayed about it, and God gave them, told them this piece of land. They drilled this well. They, they didn't know to God. They just leave it to God. Everything's to God. And they, and, um, they said, they, the guy came to drill the well, and they always, everybody, all their neighbors that have property around them, they all go down like 125 feet. That's when they get the water, and that's it. And uh, it's from the water. Like most of them. And they hit this they hit rock. And the guy says, Look, this is rock. He says, Do you mind if I go further? And he goes, I don't have any more money. This is all the money we'll take back. Right? I don't have any money. You know, he says, Look, I'll do it for 200 You come up with $200, I'll give you the next uh, two months to come up with it. $200, I will go down until I get it. He says, It was another almost 100 feet through the rock. And so this would have been a couple thousand dollars. And they just this water, and I captured the water. It is so pure. They are being blessed 
-hmm. And so I start thinking, why am I not recognized? So that's why I'm like here. Yeah. But there we are, and, and they're surviving, and they don't know that the visa is coming up. He's working, he's a roofer. He just works his buns off, and then they're building this shed. It's a storage room, but they're putting a country kitchen, they call it, in there, and um, and, and some bunk beds and everything. And they're building as only the lumber they have, they don't even buy that. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're building this uh, house. So they were told by one vicious county official they couldn't have, they couldn't live there. And you can't stay in a bus. Yeah. Um, you can only stay there for like you know, six months or three months at a time or something. So they're building this and they're going to put it, make it a living place. So, and they found another county official. I'll give you a variance. It's all by God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, that's great. God. That's that's fantastic. So that's why I want to know more about this. I don't mm -hmm. want to. So. Well, it's the way God wants us. I mean, you know, uh, I'm a Messianic Jew. I mean, I, I follow all the laws and commandments that God put down there to the best of my ability. You know, to the to the Orthodox, I would be terrible because I don't follow their stuff, you know. <laughs> But, uh, you know, and I had to ask God's forgiveness for coming out today even and yeah. and doing this because this is the Sabbath, you know. But it's not, you know, when we fast and pray, we're not really doing it because God commanded us. We're doing it because we want to have our total thoughts and total direction on him. You know, is forgiveness of our sins and examining ourselves and saying, God, forgive me, and trying to get closer to God. You know, yeah, the Jews, I mean, they, they think today is the day that God seals your, you know, seals you for another year, you know, you're good or bad or whatever, but you're sealed. But, uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's why, I mean, because. My life is not my own. You know, I had that other life where it was my own and it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was an alcoholic, a heavy smoker, a womanizer. I mean, you damn it, I probably did it. <laughs> Even helped with an abortion. So, you know, so. <laughs> it's. Well, I won't even get into that. That's you know, but when God converted me to a new person, and you know, I was a new person when I became God, and and the longer I keep going, the more I study, the more the Holy Spirit tells me and guides me and leads me. You know, the more I'm going. But, I mean, when I first got saved, I the first time I heard the Holy Spirit, you know, or God said, He said, "I'm going to I'm going to teach you," and God has taught me. You know. Because when you hear things from pastors, I've heard things that pastors say that they, well, that I heard them say, but then they'll, everybody else says, I didn't hear them say that. Mm -hmm. But I heard the pastor say something. So, you know, but it's the Holy Spirit in you that, that does it, you know. It's just a marvelous walk. I mean, you know, it's not necessarily easy, but I know guys walking with me. He's walking with each one of you guys, you know, because I'm no better than anybody else. We were all walking the same walk. We all want that close relationship with God. Well, I have another question because I hear so often we talk about fast and pray. I never fast. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know how to do it. I don't know when to do it. Do you all do that? Well, like to, today, I mean, because in my age and when I'm on, you know, I can't, I can't fast completely do away with eating and drinking. So uh, I've given up coffee today. Now, if you know me, that's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very big deal. Because my system, you know, is starting to, is craving that caffeine you know mm -hmm. and the more my body craves it the more i look to god See, that's one thing though in fasting goes yeah, there are some pastors that claim that you just have to give up one thing like lamb or something or you just, like lamb like the catholics do lamb you just give up one thing no it's you, you um and, and it's just, it doesn't have to be long term. It can be weak, but then you have to have water. And uh, you know, you you uh, you're supposed to do it without food. And so, and and if you can do it without water, but most people in Florida can use water. So it's just yeah, it, that's what the fasting is. Yeah. Like today, I mean, it's just one day. It's in Isaiah 50, I think it is. This is the fast I have chosen yeah. to humble yourself to stop pointing the finger. Um, well, it's mentioned in the New Testament. It was because think. they were referring back to Isaiah. Yeah. Um, it's like what I the Bible. I'm not back to that. Also, fasting, even when we need fasting from food, I was reading a bit of this. Fasting can be anything that you're kind of addicted to. You spend a lot of time, like TV, mm -hmm. you know, TV watching, you can fast for two yeah. people a lot. Or you have to go by next thing. Being on Facebook or the computer. Anything that takes up a lot of your time. Let me let me let me read. Let me read you. Let me read you what God says. It's in Isaiah 50, 58, rather. Tell my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness. It did not forsake uh, the ordinance of the God and ask, ask me of the ordinance of justice. They take, they take delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you have taken no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. You explore all, explode, uh, explore all your labors. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and to strife with a fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. It is a fast. Is it a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? It is to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes. Would you call this a fast and accept the day of the Lord? Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. It is not to share your bread with the hungry, is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And that you bring your house to the, to the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light will break forth like, like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry 
and satisfy the afflicted soul. Then your light shall dawn, dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul and soul in drought and strengthen your bones and you shall be like a water garden and it's like a spring of water whose waters do not fail that's a fast basically walking with god and yes hearing and doing what he needs yes. at my age it's real difficult for me to fast that I had such a burden with certain issues. And uh, I asked the Lord, you know, well, he seemed to bring it to me, really, to, to not eat or drink anything for three days from the time of the day to 12 o'clock the next day. And it was very difficult for me. But I obeyed. And I had a miracle happen to myself, which I wasn't asking for. It was for my family. So mm -hmm. it's just often to break the hole of the darkness mm -hmm. and the stronghold mm -hmm. of the enemy. It was a spiritual thing. But when God mm -hmm. says it, uh, I, I've seen it over the years work. No, that is very healthy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you still yeah. need to yeah, it's, it's it's healthy too. You yeah. need the water put your body to keep. The my, science does. My it, daughter's a nurse. It's and, true, it does, but that's what science does. They try to explain why yeah. you had that supposed miracle. It was just your body doing it with because you fast. So, but it is while well, that is very true because they're trying to explain God. Always yeah. science mm -hmm. trying to it's, it's, that scientism is the big thing. In the world, but worldwide, and, and, and it, so that's what you're <clears throat> supplanting. And that's what I'm saying, guys, is supplanting God with science. You know, we can explain that. But how can they explain when the prayer goes out and it's answered? Yeah, your prayer. Well, they'll answered. they'll have some kind of answer. Yeah. Yeah. Say it has nothing to do with it. Yeah, I know. That just was a coincidence. You know, you're right, though. When you're praying, though, it's like you mentioned it was, you know, in James. I always think of James saying that we should be worshiping it every day, not just one day set aside. Oh, yeah. So it should be when you're praying. The whole thing is just you should remind yourself of um, the need for the Father, for what He provides. And, um, you know that's that's where our that's where our mind is to be while you're doing even when I'm working and I'm driving and you know, it's always you, know, you, you have to be focused on God and um, and then things can change you know what happen. You know, can I just tell you something along those same lines? I was just going to tell you, Connie, that when I did that for about seven to ten days, fourth day was a hard. Huh? <laughs> when I was fasting, I didn't I just had water. And um, anyway, about the fourth day, fourth day was harder for me. Between the third and the fourth day was the hardest. After that, man, something clicked. Yeah. Everything was cool. You know, I didn't desire food or nothing. Mm -hmm. And one of the side effects I did not anticipate was my hunger for reading God's word. It came out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, I just said, give me that book. And I, and I just, you know, like, that was my food. And it was the weirdest thing. No one told me that was going to happen. Uh, I just thought, I just thought, you know, I'll feel yeah. better and, you know, all that stuff. But no, it, it just, that's all I wanted to do. So fortunately, at that period of time, I didn't have a lot of distractions. So I could focus on it. And I guess God knew that, you know, but that is a fascinating thing that what you experience in time is real fasting. Yeah. Are you working and having your normal life during these days? Um, yes, I was, but I was fortunate that I could spend a lot of time where I wasn't running around doing this and that. So I had kind of, I guess, an, an ideal situation where I could spend a lot of time at home and it just took over. I didn't care about doing anything else. In fact, each day went by, I had a little less energy, a little less energy to do anything. Mm -hmm. So it just heightened my my mind, and I got sharper mentally. 
I was memorizing stuff like that. And I thought, this is weird. This is weird. I didn't expect it. And then by the seventh, eighth day, I thought, you know, I probably ought to start eating something, you know. But, but you know, I, I didn't care. Yeah. You know, I was fine. I don't want to end recording. The spirit, the spirit just took over, I guess. Bye.